when I was originally asked to talk, the topic that was put before me is what to do when the Klan comes to town. And I thought, what business do I, a cisgender white woman, have any business saying what to do when the Klan comes to town? Because I'm not going to be their target. And then I thought about it a little bit more, and I know that I was asked to talk about that because of the work that I do building peace teams, building alternatives to violence, and building alternatives to a militarized police force. And I thought, that I can talk about. But if we're going to talk about what to do when the Nazis come to town, or our fears about the Nazis coming to town, we also need to acknowledge that they're here. That this isn't about an outside hate group coming into Ann Arbor. When African American youth tell me that they feel targeted on the buses, we need to look at the white supremacy in our own community. When a 16-year-old child can be taken down with a grown man's knee on his neck, and we're told, well, this is what we train our police to do, then we need to acknowledge the anti-blackness and the racism and the white supremacy in our community. Not from somebody else coming in, but from within. And if we can't deal with that, then it, we don't need to worry about when the white supremacists come, because we've already lost. We need to look at ourselves. When University of Michigan students come home, home to a place that is supposed to be a sanctuary and safe to find the N-word scratched on their door and flyers of a known white supremacist are put up around town, when the skate park has swastikas painted, then we don't need to think about what happens when the Nazis come. We need to think about what are we as a community going to do today, now. People often ask me to talk about the Antifa movement. And they assume that as a practitioner and a believer in nonviolence, that I am going to say bad things. But I will tell you that if you are not anti-fascist, your nonviolence is meaningless. Nonviolence is not about sitting down and saying, oh, it's OK that the n-word was on the door. Nonviolence is not about saying it is OK that our police think it is OK to pin a 16-year-old child to the ground. Nonviolence is about being in your face. It is about being confrontational. And it is about love. But it is about waging love, fiercely and strategically. And one way that we can do that is with peace teams. And so I wanted to share a couple of stories from peace teams that I've been on. How many of you were here in 1998 when the Klan rallied? Few folks. We placed a violence reduction peace team of 109 people here on that day. Our job was to create an alternative to the divisiveness and hatred of the Klan and an alternative to the militarization and violence of what had happened two years previous when the police responded. There were, we organized ourselves into small affinity teams. On one affinity team, there was an African American woman, an Asian American woman, and a man who identified as a queer Jew. During the course of the day, there was a man in the crowd that had come to support the Klan. It was hot, everyone is in shorts and a t-shirt, and this man has a leather jacket on. So we're paying attention. He takes off his jacket, and there's swastikas tattooed all over him. The crowd steps in and shoves him. Somebody breaks a bottle over his head. And then the peace team stepped in. They surrounded him, they got him first aid, they escorted him out of town, and as they were leaving, bringing him to safety, the man who identified as a queer Jew said, 
I want to point out to you, an African American, an Asian American, and a queer Jew saved your life today. The man replied, perhaps we all bleed the same blood after all. Another example, quickly, we placed a peace team in Dearborn when Terry Jones came with threats to burn the Quran during the Arab American Festival. Terry Jones never made it, but the threats of his arrival allowed for a lot of other hate groups to come. One of them set up across from the children's tent and throughout the course of the day yelled horrible things about the Prophet Muhammad and really targeted the young people. One young woman at the beginning of the day began to engage and fight back verbally saying awful things herself. We let her know that we wouldn't stop her from doing that, that her anger was justified, but acknowledged that she was being filmed and wondered how she'd want to look. The day went on. She became a particular target for them. They yelled at her every time she walked by, calling her a slut and a tramp, speaking about her mother and her holy prophet. Later in the day, at about 3 o'clock, it was hot. The sun was out all day. She went to the dollar store and bought several bottles of water. She came out and handed each man in the hate group a bottle of water and said, it is hot. Your throat must be dry from all the preaching you've been doing today. In my religion, we are taught to welcome the stranger and care for one another. Please have some water. I learned so much about peacemaking from that young woman that day, and that is the lesson I hope we as a community can also learn. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.